The Czechs conquered all of Germany in just under 50 years. As a result, most European countries hate us, forming a massive coalition against us. We're outnumbered. 400,000 soldiers against our 60,000. Can I survive? Hello imperialists, Lucas here. Now, under Czech rule, Germany is united and grand. Honestly, Europe is ablaze with hatred for the Czechs. Nearly every country or major country despises us, including some African nations, with Castile being our only ally. Our own country is also in turmoil. That's because of the last two wars to conquer all of northern and southern Germany before 1500 were challenging. It will be equally challenging to survive the next 50 years without losing a single piece of land. Look at this, France has 476 points of aggressive expansion. Normally we shouldn't exceed 50. Our former ally Poland has 320 and the mighty Ottoman Empire 142. Even our ally is on the brink. Unfortunately, we have to plunder the territories we've conquered because our overextension is too high. We normally shouldn't exceed 100 to 120% overextension. These numbers are manageable, but other parameters are so bad that a revolution threatens. And we don't want that. If I had united Germany 25 years later, we wouldn't face any coalition. Thankfully, our vassals are fairly loyal, except for Passau, which I acquired by accident. But we'll manage with this small duchy. To survive, we must continue waiting wars, stabilizing the situation and annexing our vassals, though it will be tough. There will be bloodshed. Many Germans will die for the freedom of Germany. I hope our borders will expand further towards France or Poland. Our strategy must ensure we don't wage simultaneous wars against France, the Ottoman Empire and Poland. These countries cannot be united against us in one war. It's crucial to control this flag and wage wars immediately after the peace period with the country ends before it joins the massive coalition against us. And that is really a massive coalition. The only real threats to us are Moscow and England. Additionally, where possible, we'll establish states in our country to earn more. We'll also reduce autonomy as we must quell all these rebels. I don't believe it. I can have one ally. Corfu? How did this happen? It's the only island nearby that doesn't hate us. We're also losing a lot of money, so I'll need to reorganize my army soon. Most of them are mercenaries right now due to staffing issues in our army. Oh, and my army's a little too big. Fortunately, I have quite good generals, and we have a lot of army tradition. Naturally, we fought many wars as the Czechs. I'm unlucky because my developed gold mine collapsed. The same happened to the one I was developing, so it's crucial to quickly redevelop these three gold mines, or actually just two of them, back to level 10. We're reducing autonomy wherever possible. We're dealing with rebellions as they arise, but we need to start making money with this country quickly. I noticed that feudal taxes haven't been fully implemented everywhere, which is bad for us. We're in a fairly good situation with loans, having only one large expensive loan. Now we need to focus on stabilizing our country. We'll suppress rebellions and prepare for the upcoming war with France, which is expected in about a year and a half, unless a coalition attacks me first. Unfortunately, we have a terrible ruler and an average successor who I'm getting rid of. The war will be interesting, at least. First, I'll strike at Savoy and try to release Milan and other countries to potentially peacefully vassalize them. Remember, we have espionage ideas, so this will be easier for us now. I'm also significantly reducing corruption because of the high overextension and unbalanced research in our country. That explains a lot of... Oh, a civil war is coming up. We might not release any vassals, but we'll take some money. Now, we're quickly besieging the capital of France. I hope we can end this war quickly, as Spain is somehow losing their war. We have no choice but to hit France hard, and we'll have to do the same with the Ottoman Empire, though it's almost impossible, but with Poland, definitely. The Ottoman Empire is just too powerful. Unfortunately, we must end the war earlier than planned because Spanish Toledo has fallen and they'll soon withdraw from the war. But we might still weaken our opponent, albeit only financially. We have a long peace for nine years, it was worth it. To make it easier to maintain Brandenburg, which I had to give more provinces to, I made it our march. But it still strongly desires independence. Now. I'm going around suppressing rebellions. For the next two years, that's all I'll be doing. I'm also accumulating points to raise stability, which will end our civil war. Have I finally stabilized the situation in my country? Almost. And finally, is the civil war over? Not yet. Where are the rebels? Oh, I'm earning money and we've stabilized the situation in our country. Finally. But does it really change anything? Just before our next war with Poland, we must attack them. This country cannot join a coalition against us, but Poland and Black Sheep have an alliance? How? Oh no, to put it mildly, I'm in trouble. I'm practically at war with all of Europe plus the Ottoman Empire. A huge coalition has formed against me, nearly 400,000 soldiers against my 60,000. And now England has attacked me in a coalition war. So I can't capture their capital and force peace with this country. It will be a slaughter. That's why I've recruited another mercenary army, which will be the first to at our opponents. We just need to choose a good place for battles. 
Right now, our main focus is to win battles and avoid any losses. Our vassals should adopt a defensive stance to avoid major battles. We have a technological edge over everyone except the Ottoman Empire. But we can manage, as our battles with them are fairly balanced. We have excellent commanders. We need to focus on defeating the English armies as they lead in this war. I will call on Spain for help, although I'm prepared for the cost this will bring to that country. Sadly, my ruler has died, so we are under a regency now. But the Queen is quite good. We keep winning battles. I'm not sure why our army is so powerful, but it is. It's surprising that I don't have any military ideas and I'm thinking about getting rid of the religious ones, since I don't really need them. I'm only keeping them for the third bonus from the national ideas. I could use military ones, especially those related to mercenaries, to have unlimited and cheap mercenaries, which is tempting. I'd be happy to go after the English army, but unfortunately, I don't have access to their capital. If I had access, we could easily win this war. Not having access to their capital makes things difficult. This is the worst country that could have declared war on us. Now we must manage and strike to the south. I can't allow armies to consolidate against you. I'm not sure how to prevent this effectively. It's unfortunate that this war started just when I couldn't immediately focus on it and destroy these countries. Because of this, I'm in a tough situation now. Luckily, Russia is still technologically behind us, so we can easily annihilate their troops. The only real threat to me is the Ottoman Empire. Actually, I'm winning quite nicely. How many provinces would I have to give up to end this war if necessary? Not many. The worst part is that all the Ottoman armies have gathered here nicely, which is unlucky. If these were armies of 20, 30,000, we could have defeated them one by one, just like he does. Especially these smaller enemy armies in this area. Another piece of bad luck is that there are also English armies here, and I'm very keen on harming that country. Just as I want to improve relations with Poland, Poland, so let Poland now wage war with Moscow. I see it clearly. You know, I regret breaking the alliance with this country. It's been so helpful. But probably because I annihilated about six Muscovite armies here. I can't believe it. I'm actually winning this war. Really? I think I can win it. And I don't even have too much debt. Okay, from what I see, I need to recapture these provinces and the war will be won for us. Because they currently give the most war score, meaning England's war points. I should do something about this list, as finding valuable provinces to recapture is troublesome. Well, okay. The war is basically won, but it didn't give us much. But I had to end it because my peace period with France just ended. So I have to attack them again and this time I hope to do more damage. But honestly, I don't have much of a choice. I'll make sure not to repeat my mistakes, so I am interested in the province of Calais. I want Burgundy to make territorial claims on it. I also need to lay claim to the Ottoman Empire to attack them separately. The second war with France might be easier than the first. We've completely broken through French defense and are occupying the country. We'll heavily damage France. France now. We'll take a lot of money from them, release two vassals, not Gasconi, which would have been the best vassal, but that's okay. Look, we can now make these countries our vassals. Great, I also got rid of that annoying country that kept rebelling. Now we get two very loyal ones. Good, our country isn't in turmoil anymore. I even started making good money. The situation has stabilized. I'm not declaring wars randomly because everyone has strong alliances, but I need to be ready for a war with the Ottoman Empire when our peace period ends, as there'll be no forgiveness here. I've discarded my religious ideas and now I'm focusing on military ones. I somewhat regret not having a military focus established, but I'll be able to change that soon. Champagne is unpredictable. Sometimes I almost have it as a vassal, missing just one point. Other times I'm short by 30. What's going on? We'll launch a quick raid on Poland, but I must be very cautious about a coalition. The Ottoman Empire is at war, but our peace period with these countries has ended. A coalition including the Ottoman Empire is certain because we have a lot of aggressive expansion with this country. Luckily, the Polish army is outdated, and I can easily defeat them in battle. The key is to have a technological advantage over the opponent. The only country where we don't have this advantage is, of course, the Ottoman Empire. I think military reform will be very beneficial for us. I think I'll release Prussia as a vassal. Champagne has become a good vassal for us. It's 1524, and the Reformation era hasn't started yet. I have to burn my administrative development in provinces to avoid exceeding the governing capacity. I'm also getting a handle on trade, focusing on the Lübeck region. Integrating Holstein will increase our share there. We'll vassalize Prussian duchies. Prussia is a strong country and will be a valuable vassal or even better, a march. Finally, our finances are under control so I can catch up on technology, which was quite behind.
time. Surprisingly, we're attacking France again, with Castile's help, because it will be much quicker. I'm doing well with two mercenary armies, complete with cavalry and artillery. This setup is working great so far. My army isn't too large. I'm at half of my limit, but I can recruit more, if needed. I've almost paid off all my loans. We're constantly working on developing our economy. I've also got better ministers now, as you can see, with plus three. We're catching up in all areas. So, at least for now, the situation is under control. It's definitely much better than the situation in Poland right now. Interesting, can I become a Protestant? Honestly, I think Protestantism is much better than Hussitism, so I'll convert. Oh no, this has upset most of my unions and everything. But overall, we currently have some really good bonuses as Protestants. Also remember that choosing a specific aspect for 10 years gives you another bonus, which you can see now. All we need to do is change it every 10 years, and it will be very useful. Honestly, this is the last time I'm making a peace deal with France. In the next war, we'll likely conquer them, but this time we're taking their money again and humiliating them. Something is wrong with my prestige and those kind of rulers I'm talking about. In hindsight, it was a mistake not to go back to the time before I formed Austria. I changed my accepted culture and now most of my territories don't have an accepted culture, which means I have less manpower and collect fewer taxes. This isn't good. Wait, can I restore the Union over Poland? That seems pointless as I won't be able to maintain the Union with this country. I have 237 aggressive expansion, which is impossible. I finally completed my second ideas, believe it or not, in 1540, and I can develop fifth tier of government reforms, which are very strong. These are some of the strongest reforms. As I showed in a French episode, we now get a Prussian reform, but it's only for mercenaries. Unfortunately, our good tax era has ended, so we'll be changing the third bureaucratic reform. We converted the whole country to Protestantism very quickly. It's also interesting that my unions and vassals have also converted to Protestantism Protestantism, even though they were Hussites before. I won't be getting a union over Poland, as it's not profitable for me, but we will acquire a few provinces for Prussia Duchy. Yes, I really forgot the name of that country. If there was a commonwealth and I only got a union over the commonwealth, I would definitely conquer that country under the union. But getting two unions now, Poland and Lithuania, I don't want two slots occupied. Especially since there will be big problems with these countries and it would take a long time to integrate them, because we have a lot of aggressive expansion with them. I wasn't expecting this war. We need to end the war with Poland very quickly now and then go to war with the Ottoman, although he might occupy all my best fortresses at this moment. Something doesn't add up with this army limit. For now, it looks quite good. The Spanish are doing well. Of course, I'm making significant use of them in this war. The downside of mercenaries is that their units take longer to replenish, and even if I do consolidation, it takes even longer. So it's probably not worth doing with mercenaries. The quality of the Ottoman army is staggering. Well, there's a reason for that. Okay. Okay, Poland got off easy this time. It only lost a few provinces to Prussia, and now I need to slightly change my country in military terms to take all these bonuses that will now affect the quality of my army. So basically morale and discipline. What additional benefits do I get? I'm not sure where it's written. The British have also joined this war. That's actually good, because we can easily defeat them. At least that's what I think. If needed, we still have militarization. And frankly, I think this is the first time I'll use it. It will be quite expensive, but it's necessary. It gives us really powerful bonuses. And there goes the British army. Not bad. The Ottomans just had a maximum of 260,000 troops. Now they're down to 140,000. <laughs> looks like they lost a few battles. Did you really want this war? All right, we've broken through. The Ottomans have retreated. So now let's head to their capital and finish this war. As you can see, I've recaptured all my fortresses. We're managing fine. The Ottomans are quite discouraged by this war, which works in my favor. They've already lost half their army. Look at their massive losses. I've I've had huge losses too, but mine are mercenaries, so it doesn't affect me. Plus, ever since I implemented my additional discipline, the Ottomans see me as weaker and often seek battles, but my army isn't as weak as they think. Beautiful slaughter, beautiful slaughter. Look how much manpower they've lost compared to my mercenaries. It's incredible, an unstoppable wave of mercenaries. The first development of the era is war score versus other religion. Unfortunately, the Spanish have betrayed us and left the war. I think we can handle it on our own now. I'm surprised at how many troops the Burgundians have deployed. 63,000. How can they afford that? We keep going. We're beating the Ottomans, destroying their army. They seem to have a big problem now. Low morale. Wow, these mercenaries are really giving them a beating ever since I maximized militarization. We successfully conquered the rest of Slovakia, gaining a lot of money and war reparations from the Ottoman Empire. The war was won, but it was very bloody. That's why I formed an alliance with the Russians for balance. To avoid wasting our troops with militarization, we're now attacking the Danes, France, 
France and Poland with Lithuania, but here we'll take only money. It's interesting that the Ottoman Empire was left with a huge debt after the war. The French army is easily defeated, standing no chance against us. What? A mercenary as my advisor? Wow, he's so cheap, I'm taking him. France has shrunk a bit, including Paris, which I've now taken and renamed to Paris. I also liberated Gascony as it's beneficial to have such a large vassal. We'll practically have 1-3 to 1-4 of France for free. So I'm honestly considering choosing influence ideas in 1554 as my third idea, which is pretty pathetic, to cheaply annex vassals or maybe administrative ideas, to later add influence as my fourth choice for the same purpose. We have a powerful Burgundy and Brandenburg, and while I don't plan to integrate them, the integration of Burgundy alone would take about 55 years, which is a lot, and I can't get it for free, right? I must admit our border gore is quite unsightly, but another 50 years have passed and our Czech lands have not only survived, but also significantly expanded. The economic and military stability has greatly improved, As and if you want to see an effective method of conquering Germany without a coalition, I recommend this episode from Brandenburg 